I'm Richard Miller with Goldie May, and this is the live genealogy research series. Watch as James Tanner and I, along with invited guests, work through a genealogy problem with no script and no agenda. Maybe you'll learn from the big strategy, maybe you'll learn from the small features and the tools, or maybe you'll just see a better way to do it and you can leave a comment so we can all learn. I hope you find this really helpful. Now here is the research. Okay, welcome to episode 12. I'm really excited today to have Nicole Elder Dyer here. She is the mother-daughter duo, or one of the two, um, mm -hmm. at Family Locket. So, hi. Uh, hi, Nicole, how are you? I'm great. I'm happy Good. to be here. I'm excited to do this and talk about some research as we just go for it unrehearsed. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So yeah, I have, uh, I've listened to Nicole and Diana's podcast for a long time, uh, Research Like a Pro and uh, just run into them at conferences and things. So Nicole graciously offered or, or, or accepted my invitation to come on this uh, the show. So we're going to try it out. She's going to go through the um, research like a pro process as we do our research over the next little while. And then while we're doing the, you know, the tedious parts of combing through records, we'll cut that out. So you'll see the condensed version, but you'll still get the full sense of the whole process that Nicole and Diana teach and talk about. So I'm really excited for that to be in the episode today. So Nicole, is there anything else you want to say about you all and your process before we get started? Uh, well, my first thought was, I hope that you don't have to edit out too much. Hopefully we'll just be finding all good things and everything yes. that we do is going to be amazing. I'm shooting That's to right, be yeah. the least edited episode. <laughs> hey, that'd be cool. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes. No. Um, yeah. So research like a pro was developed by my mom, Diana Elder. She's an accredited genealogist professional. And then she taught me you know, kind of how to do professional level genealogy research. And we have a business where we research for clients and we teach people how to do research at that level as well with our, you know, our online courses and study groups. And after having gone through the study groups several times myself, I finally feel confident that I know how to write a citation for anything. And I am good at keeping things organized in my research log so that I can write a report when I'm done. And Recently, I've been working on writing some proof arguments incorporating DNA evidence. And so that's kind of what we're going to do today is a little piece of that. So I was going to share kind of the overarching reason why I'm focusing on Clement Darnell here. And that's because I'm writing a proof argument about Bathsheba Arnold West's daughter, Joanna West. So Joanna West was the daughter of Bathsheba and Bathsheba was the daughter of Humphrey Arnold and Harriet Smith. And my proof argument is down here, proving that Barsheba Tharp was the daughter of Joanna West. Well, okay. all these people down here at the bottom are DNA matches. Hmm. And so in order for those DNA matches to be used as evidence for that link over here, I have to prove each parent child link in all of these lines. And that takes some documentation for each. Usually it could just be one or two citations. And so for his link to parents, um, there's not a lot of good, there's not like one will or probate record that shows that his mother was Francis Nolan. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of indirect evidence, I'm guessing, because somebody has put this in their family tree. So all I've seen is that there's a bunch of family trees that have that information. So citing someone else's family tree, that's an authored source, probably not going to work. So I'm going to have to do a research project and write a paragraph or a page or two with the evidence for this parent child link. Okay. So does that sound like too much work for one proof argument? Okay. Yeah, that sounds really good for today. Great. So the first thing in research like a pro is to analyze your pedigree and pick a research question. So here is Clement Darnold. I've already kind of selected him and told you why, but the kind of the thing to do is just to check and see what information you have and kind of where it came from. So I had created this tree and added Clement and um, the main sources of information that I have so far are this find a grave memorial that says his parents' names are, let's see, actually it doesn't on here. I better open it and see. And then you have to click over to visit the website. Okay. So on find a grave, it says Clement Darnold. It has his birth and his death date. And usually I would assume that comes from a, a photo of the headstone, but since we don't have that, we can't assume there is a headstone. It does say that he was buried in the Darnold cemetery. So that's good. And below yeah. we have this memorial, which is an authored source because somebody wrote this and put it here. Clement Darnold was the son of William Darnold and Fanny Nolan. So that's what I was saying in the trees that fan Fanny Noling or Noland 
was the mother. And that's the parent child link I want to prove, but this information here isn't enough because it doesn't say where this information came from. It just has the, the information. It is okay. direct evidence. So that's good, but it, mm -hmm. it's authored. And so this is basically my research question, I guess. So okay. proving that. Yeah. So let's see, I've got Goldie May here. Let's start a new project on Goldie May, and then let's write a research objective. So now that I've done my pedigree analysis in research, like a pro, we write an objective. And is this where we should write it in Goldie May? Yeah, that's a great place Details to do it. You can, you can put it in the title if it's, but if that feels too long, then, uh, you know, if you type it in the title, it will wrap around, but you can put it there too. Let's do this. Um, was, was Francis Noland Noling, mother of Clement Darnold. Okay. So there's our objective. Now let's just put some of the details because usually when we write an objective, it has some identifying information about the person of interest. Okay. Clement was born 15 September, 1808 and died 17 December, 1872. And we don't have places for that. It was just the dates, right? Let's check again. Yeah. So there's no yeah. places here, but we could nail him down to the place of burial. So we can say, and was buried in Carroll County, Kentucky. And you consider those facts um, authored as well, since they don't have a source and they don't have a headstone. Yep. But that's all we have. That's and we might have. find as we research that the, you know, some of these are wrong and that's okay. We just have to start mm -hmm. somewhere. Cool. It does say that he married Drusilla Henry on 23 July. Let's add that. Cause that's in a different County too. Great. Cool. Now we have a good research objective that will guide good. us. We have place, we have time. We have a unique person, Drusilla Henry to help identify Clement. Yeah, I'm going to copy this over okay. to my research project template. Yeah. This is where I'm going to keep some notes. Okay. So for research like a pro, it's great to have the outline of all the steps here. Who Good. was Fanny and Noling, the mother of Clement Darnold? And I usually give it a title like that. Feels great to get all set up. Well, the next step, as you can see here, is to do your summary of known facts. What I'm going to do is use my Airtable research log and the timeline, putting in what you know. So we'll start okay. here, I guess. We know that he was buried in this cemetery. So I'm going to grab the URL here and put it into the URL field. And we have a lot of events from this one source. So I'm going to add them all. So I'll also grab the citation here. Love how Find a Grave makes it for you. Putting it into the citation field. I always edit a couple things. If I have a headstone image, I'll add that there's a headstone image since I don't. I want okay. to make sure it's obvious that people know this is a memorial page. So now I have my citation and I can copy this down for several events. So I'm just going to duplicate it a couple of times. Okay. So now I can put in the birth, death, and burial. We have 15 September, 1808. And then we have his death, 17 December, 1872. And then the burial, we have the place, which was Carroll County. County. And then in details, I'll put some information from the record, like um, Darnold Cemetery. Okay. Actually, sometimes I just take this entire thing and paste it in. And in fact, if you expand the cell, it gives you a lot of space. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. I have rich text editing on, and that makes it nice. Keeps all the links yeah, and things. It's really nice. All right. So I've got that info there. I don't have, well, let's see, type of source. I don't think I have, well, it's type of event, I guess. Death. And yeah, sometimes I like to see this all color coded, but. Oh, cool. Okay. All right. So what else do I have for my starting point information? Well, I had the 1860 census that I had found for him. Yeah. Okay. And that's when I was like, you know what? There's not enough direct evidence from original records to be able to just have a citation because look, by the time you know, 1850, 1860, he was already an adult living with his wife and children. So he's not going to be listed no. as a child with his parents. Mm -hmm. So we can add this to the timeline. This is going to help us look, he's living in Carroll County, Kentucky. So that confirms okay. that he yeah. lived there, that uh, authored source that he was buried there. So we know at least in 1860, we can add a residence. We can add, um, we can't add relationships from this, right? Because it's inferred, Implied. but these are probably, I mean, we had in the authored source that this was his wife's name, Drusilla. And look at this name, Magruder. Very unique. That's a great one. That's yeah, actually the next <laughs> line down in the proof okay. I already proved his relationship to Clement. 
So Magruder, I started at the bottom. I started with the DNA match. It's always easier with the DNA match going to their parents and then up. Mm. So when I got to Magruder, proved his parents with a couple of citations to like a later, um, like I think he had a death certificate, but then this generation is always the hardest because yeah. they didn't live with their parents on the 1850 census. And unless there's a will or probate, you're kind of out of luck. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So let's grab this URL and put it in here. So we've got 1872. Let's insert a row 1860 census here. And then I'm just going to paste the URL that I copied. And now we can write a citation. So 1860 U.S. Census, Carroll County, Kentucky, population schedule. Now, what was the specific location? Mill Creek. Mill Creek. Hmm. So that's next. Okay, then the next thing is going to be what page within Mill Creek. So we've got to open up the image to see that. Okay. And that will also allow us to analyze this image a little closer and see if there's any oh, yeah. neighbors or anybody around or just what's going on. Clement Darnell. So I've been saying two things, right? Darnell and Darnold. Hmm. So this that's interesting. Darnell and these ones, yeah. Yeah. And then the same with Fanny. She's got either Noland or Noling. Different name, same issue. So when you mention the neighbors, do you just kind of, even if you aren't kind of doing full on fan club research here, do you just take a glance at the names to see if there are any other Absolutely. family members nearby? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'll show you how I keep track of that in my Airtable log too. So yeah. I'm just going to grab, so there's two, there's 141 and there's 65. So now I'm just going to decide which one is better. So 65, now I'm going to go back one page and then the page is 64. Yeah. I think that one's better. I like the one okay. that goes every page and gives a number. So page 64. And the next would be the dwelling and the family number. So okay. going down here, we can kind of see it's been, sometimes they cross it out in ink blot. 463, 464, 456, 457. Okay. okay. So 464. dwelling 464. And then you remember family 457. Yeah, 457. Thank you. Yeah. And then we're going to put in Clement <laughs> Darnell household. And I think that's everything we need for the first layer. I just want to make sure I spelled it right. Darnell. I tried to spell it the way they do in the record, not the way it was indexed, unless it will prohibit someone from finding it if you don't. I think that's how they did oh, it see. in the record too. And if it's really different, like if they had indexed it, Sarnell, I would put mm -hmm. both in my citation okay, just so, so people find could find it. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Now, image online, ancestry. I use the keyboard shortcut for control I mm. and my favorite thing to do for this is to grab the first half of the citation or sorry, the first half of the URL from the URL, uh, long URL before the question mark mm -hmm. and put it in the citation. I just like having that Perfect. directly. Yeah. 14 June is today's date. So we're citing national archives publication. What is the publication number? It's over here. Okay. So it's okay. publication. Um, yeah. M653 rolls 361. So there's our citation. Great. Nice. So okay. I've got that. So then for the details, I usually will just review this really quick. There's not a whole lot of info here. He was a farmer. He owned $1,900 worth of real estate, which tells me he's going to have land records. So we can go look at deeds, which mm -hmm. might help us. And he was born in Virginia, which is what I would expect because this common ancestral couple I'm doing the descendancy research on was from Fauquier County, Virginia. Okay. And um, several branches of their descendants came to Kentucky in Carroll County. So this seems okay. to be what I'm so noticing. It looks pretty good. Okay. It's a good migration path. <laughs> yeah. All right. So now I'm just going to go back to this and copy and paste all this into my research log. Okay. So now I have his family members. So I know some of his inferred wife and children's names. And I did have one clue though, that he had real estate. So let's put that. Oh yeah. Good thought. What else? Did we miss anything? Farmer? No, I, I was going to ask you after this one, if you already looked for a 19, 1870 census. Not yet, but okay, I think that would be a good work ahead still. Okay. I think we should put that in our plan to check all the okay. census records and land. We can add that to our plan now too. Okay. And probably tax because he lived in a place that I know we could find this out in locality research, but I remember that Carroll County has some tax records. I think I used before. So what we're going to do next to here is just, well, let's add Carroll County and then going over 
Oh, I forgot to put his birthplace was Virginia. Oh, nice. Okay. Okay. Now notes, check land records. Fans. Oh, I wanted to show you this. So to, check, oh, cool. yeah, to keep track of the fans, okay. then I type their names here. And then this is a linked record field and their names are added to the fan club table here. Cool. So okay. Let's just play then you see if they come up bit. again and again. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So I'm going to take this over to the screen. You guys can't see. And what I, actually, I'll show you what I do <laughs> to make it easier on myself. I just pull this up and look at the oh, index. Nice. Okay. And then I kind of just type in the heads of household. So I'm going to go down this list and type these in. So I'm taking it away onto my other screen. Oh, okay. Yeah. Going back to the, did I Are not you're doing the uh, just surnames or full names? I'll show you. I do the first and last name. Okay. So we've got Taylor Boris. Add a new record for him. That was the top of the page. And oh no, that's the child of the family in the household before. He's only five twelfths. Oh, because yeah. he's left over from the previous page. I'm going back. I don't really want it to be the baby. I want the head of okay. household. Will be a little more useful to be the adult male. And so they had a huge family. It looks like we have fielding worries. We'll change that. Okay, so those okay. are the closest cool. fan club members. I don't see cool. anybody named Darnell or Darnold or Noling or anything on these two pages, yeah. but that's okay. It's just we'll kind of we, interesting. Yeah, we'll see what we run into later. Yeah. I'm guessing that there were some relatives living in the county, but probably just not on those two pages. I would probably just do a search for anyone in the county with those two surnames I just mentioned. Maybe uh, in our okay. research plan, we could do that. Okay. So we'll add that later. Okay, so those were our two starting points um, analysis things, the 1860 census and the find a grave. So, um, in research, like a pro, we gather all the info we start with, then, um, you know, we could add that this find a grave here gave us, um, his parents' names. So the memorial said okay, his yeah. parents were, and then I actually saved it right here. Okay, so parents, I always put the parents at the very top of the timeline because it kind of goes along with their birth. Yeah, that makes so I'll just put that okay. date there. Good sense. Um, birth, it's a birth information, I guess. It's uh -huh. a birth event. This is like yeah. the type of event that I want to track. So Clement Darnold was the son of William Darnold and Fanny Nolan. And that information is, what kind of source is that? So that would be a that memorial. A authored source? Authored. We don't, it's whoever wrote the, whoever wrote it on find a grave. And it was in our citation, who wrote this? Maintained genealogy by genealogy girl. girl. Yeah, so she added that. I don't know where she got it. Um, so the informant is unknown. I usually put undetermined. And so we can put genealogy girl here. And then the evidence is direct evidence for his parents. So the parent information was directly stated in this memorial. Mm -hmm. All right, next we have the birth, which is also authored from Genealogy Girl. The information, we don't know where it came from, who gave that information to the Genealogy Girl. We don't know who gave it to her. So mm -hmm. the informant's unknown, but it's an exact date. So it makes me think that it was passed down in the family or there was some kind of, um, I, I think it could be at the, the headstone. It, we didn't have the picture of it, but it's Maybe it probably, before, or... it probably existed or okay. still exists. We just don't have the picture. So if I had yeah. to guess, I would say that it could have come from the headstone and the informant on the headstone was not going to be probably an eyewitness to his birth. Right. Cause right. it's like way later in his life. So I'm going to say probably secondary, which means it could be incorrect, but it could be have some parts of it could be accurate. What I've found with these dates on headstones is that they're usually correct for like the birthday and month. And then the year sometimes is a little off. Oh, interesting. More so <laughs> like, than the, yeah, that's interesting. Like, I don't know. It just depends on the family. Mm -hmm. And then the evidence here is direct. So that date was direct evidence of when he was born, direct evidence of his birth date, but the headstone doesn't give you direct evidence of his parents' names. So 
but it does give you a clue that he was born that date and you have to look for some parents that would have been the right age. So indirect evidence okay. of his parents. Okay, then the 1860 census, that is an original record. So that was wonderful. And that source is original. The information on it, there were all different kinds, right? So let's do the residents. The piece of information about his residence, that's primary information. The informant was the census taker, the enumerator. He was and, at that location. So yeah, he was, he was there, saw them. And, yeah. yeah. And then it said he was a certain age. Let's check that. Age 50, born in Virginia. So that gives us a calculated birth date of 1810, which mm -hmm. is just two years off from that headstone probably. And so we can say, um, let's add that here. Born about 1810. Okay. And going over, we can take note that the birth information Okay, so who would have been informing the census taker yeah, about we don't his know, age? Right. So we, yeah. <laughs> Undetermined. Undetermined. But if you had to guess, who do you think it was? Whoever's at home when the census taker comes. Yeah. That be, that's usually what we think yeah. of, right? Whoever was yeah. home. But the census taker, he has his instruction said to talk to the head of household. So oh, if okay. he was able to talk to the head of household and Clement was home and you know he was probably the head of household because that's how he was listed then he could have provided that birth information. Was okay. he a primary, was he an eyewitness to his birth? No, nah, he wasn't an eyewitness, but uh, <laughs> maybe the he, next he best <laughs> yeah, he was but there. Yeah, he was there. But was he, does he, he remember he that? He wouldn't have known the date at the time. Right, no. Yeah. So he he had to have been told, you were born on this day. So it's secondary at best. Yeah. Because unless his mom was living with him, I didn't see any older woman there. We've just got Drusilla, yeah. Francis, a bunch of people who are probably their children. Look, they're born perfectly every two years, 2018. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, do you think they really were? Or do you think they or were just, they just guessing their ages? Birthdays that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's funny. All right. So we're guessing that that information is secondary or, yeah, secondary. And that's a great fact about the 1860 census, um, asking them to find the head of household. I think most of them say that, and I'd have to check each one, okay. but um, at least those 1800s censuses the census instructions that i have read they say ask the head of household okay that's good. but yeah, i think no. they just would take whoever they could get if they needed to get it done and couldn't find anybody else yeah so what kind of evidence does this give us for um his birth information it's indirect say, since it's his age a lot of people say that but i you know when i did research though? on that they said it, just calculating doesn't make it indirect so i would say direct okay yeah. That's apparently Elizabeth Schoen Mills said that at some forum somewhere. So I just go with her. I can trust that. Yeah. <laughs> and then direct for his birth year and place. So it tells you when and where he was born. And then for his parents, indirect, because it doesn't tell us his parents' names, but we can use that clue to help us find his parents, right? Yeah. Virginia. We're probably looking in Virginia. And we're looking somewhere around 1810. Yeah. Okay. So we analyze some of our sources. So we're pretty we're pretty good to go. And this uh, analysis for the death, we could kind of put the same thing, right? We could put authored, undetermined, and direct. Same for the burial. So now we've done our timeline and our analysis, and we've got a starting point. So now we can probably go to the next thing okay. here. So I'm just put C timeline. And then background information. This is kind of where we have the chance to create a reference or a locality guide, or just check the Family Search Wiki for info about available maps and historical information about that county. Cool. So let's okay. do that. Should we As see you're how pulling that up, I, I, you know, I've heard on your podcast with your mom how you talk about the importance of writing because it helps you mm -hmm. focus your thinking. And I can see how even in the timeline where it's not writing prose, but as you yeah. write out each of these things, it's you're really getting like every last detail out of what's available there. Yes. It's, it could be easy to skip over that if you didn't right. do that. It is easy to skip over that. And that's a lot of the client research we do. People have gathered a lot of records, but they haven't scoured the details in the records. And one client had a, like the birthplace in England, like specifically laid out in an 18, like 85 New York census, the county of her birth in England was like written in there, right there, but it wasn't indexed. And so she oh. hadn't noticed it. And it was amazing how, like, just knowing that one County within England made it so much easier to find her birth than her parents. 
So scouring there's, those details yeah, is really important. There's probably a lot of like gems just hidden in the sources we already have. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Great. So I was just checking my Goldie May research log to see all the pages we've gone through yeah, so far. Okay. And look, we've done good because we've been tracking this in our in Airtable. So we're caught up. There's yeah. nothing here that we don't already have here. So we're good to go. Cool. So background information, okay, locality. So, yeah. so wiki is what you're thinking. I always start at the family search wiki. And what location should we look at? So we had Carroll County and we had the other location. Where did that come from? Oh, it, it came was... from the marriage. So here we didn't add that. So we could add oh, that right. marriage. I kind of yeah. want to add that. I think that's yeah. going to help do a us. Marriage event. Yeah. So we'll do July. Let's see. Okay. 23rd July, be right above here. 23rd July. What did you say? 1832? Uh-huh. Yeah. Marriage. Because that was in a different location. Yeah. So that was Gallatin County, Kentucky, right? Mm -hmm. Let's make our rows shorter so you can see more things okay. at once. And the citation is going to be this find a grave memorial. Yep. So that's easy. Just copy it down. Author, it's the same as the others. So what we would add to our research plan from that is look for the marriage record. And then we can replace this authored entry in our timeline with the original because I'm guessing there's a marriage record if we have an exact oh, date nice. in county. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Great. So another thing that's interesting in the find a grave memorial is that her name is linked. So I wonder oh, what, yeah. oh, that goes to her. Oh, there's a headstone photo for her. Drusilla. Hey. Oh, hey. Drusilla A, wife of C. Darnold, born August 4th, 1812, died October 18th, 1888. So there's no hey, picture of Clement, but there is of Drusilla. That is huge because yeah. now we can kind of see that our guess that the headstone for Clement was where those dates came from. I'm guessing he has, and look, it's falling over in the cemetery. Maybe his was lost Already, or destroyed, Yeah, but they got a picture of yeah. hers. Oh, that's good. All right. So we've got to log that. So let's go ahead and make another entry for Drusilla's death. And I don't want to put in her birth, death and burial, because that's going to clog it up. But I do want to add okay. the fact that she died and has a headstone image pretty great so let's put 1872 for his burial and then she was buried in 1888 so it'll be after okay great so now we've got that info about drusilla and the marriage which had oh and we need to oh that's the thing when i do the citation when it has a headstone image I do a thing at the end, headstone image by, mm -hmm. and then see who was the person who took the, took the picture. So sometimes it's a different person. It was Melissa Stokely. Stokely. So I'm going to take her name and her ID number and add it to my citation. Cool. Contributor number, paste that in. Okay. And then when we analyze that, we're going to put that the source is original. It's nice. an image okay. of a That's headstone. Nice fallen over looks old hmm. could be original from 1888 and then that's an important the, detail yes right because sometimes mm -hmm. they'll have newer headstones that yeah, were not redone. original yeah. yeah the informant undetermined but if you had to guess who was informing that headstone being created who would you guess a child of trusilla yeah he was gone, of course. So it would have been secondary if that was true. Who heard yeah, her who, birth date who from yeah. somebody. Yeah. And that is direct evidence of Drusilla's birth and death dates. And that she was the wife of Clement. Yeah. Great what exactly did it say? Wife of wife C. Of Darnold. Darnold. Okay. Great. Cool. All right. So now we have some pretty good starting point info. Got a couple of counties to look at. Okay. Let's go back over here. So we need some background information. Which county should we do? Carroll or Gallatin? I guess we had more in Carroll if we want to start there. It was just the marriage that was in Gallatin. Since Gallatin was earlier in life though, maybe we should start there. Getting closer to the parents. Because right, his parents. we yeah. want to get that 
time right before he was married. That's the key yeah. time when he was living with his parents, probably. Good thought. Okay. Let's try Gallatin County, Kentucky. Possibly they're listed on the marriage record if we could find it. Not in Kentucky, Not but in Kentucky. maybe. Okay. I'm trying to think on marriage records I've seen in Kentucky, it didn't have the parents, but okay. it probably could depend on the county. And Not especially early, for a maybe. man, like okay. if it were the woman and she were underage, then the parents would have to mm. sometimes write permission. But if it, I rarely see it for the man, but if there is a bond, a marriage bond, it could have one of his um, family members on as the bondsman. It could okay. be his brother, dad. So you're right. Maybe cool. we could find a check. clue on the marriage. Gallatin County, Kentucky genealogy. Hey, look, there's Gallatin, Montana and Illinois. Hey, don't be, <laughs> don't, yeah. I wonder if they were all named after Albert Gallatin. How do you I say that? I don't know that? that name. Do you know? Yeah. No. Uh, Albert Gallatin. This is the kind of thing that Sometimes takes Wikipedia you down a rabbit hole you. when you're yeah, doing does, yeah. research. Right. <laughs> Wanting to know who, who is this person? Okay. Well, Albert, I'm most... typing it in here to, yeah, let's see. Wikipedia says... Genevan American politician, America's oh. Swiss founding father. Cool. That's his title. Yeah. That's neat. Yeah. Genevan. Never heard that word. Yeah, Genevan. never heard that before. Well, what, what info do we want to put here? Because we could make a whole locality guide with everything about this county, but this is just a quick research project. Okay. So yep. I don't want to like spend hours making a locality guide, but I do have this spot in my, you know, research project, project template, I can do a bullet point or copy paste mm. some info. Okay. So that's probably what I would do. So one thing I love is this table. It tells yeah. me the starting information. So the marriage record was early. Marriage record started early enough that we might have something for them. Yes. That's Let's do that. Yeah. So that's marriages, 1799. Spelled it wrong. Oh, there it goes. Marriages started. Another question I always have is, was there record loss here? So okay. where's that? Oh, record loss. There is no known no, history of no. courthouse disasters. Good. Yes. Let me put that. Yes. What else? Land? Did you see when land started? 1799. Oh, same thing. That must be when it was okay. created. When was it created? Oh, right side. Um, it says 1798 in December. Oh, yeah. so they, well, that makes sense that they started two keeping weeks records. Of, yeah, two weeks <laughs> off for Christmas. And then, uh, who yeah. knows? Maybe they have 1798 too, just not the rest of the year. Yeah. It's that two weeks. Okay, great. So you're thinking land records for his parents living in Gallatin County and at the time he was born. Yeah. And tax. Yeah. And tax. Yeah. Cause if they were taxed right next to each other, you can say like if they were in the same tax district, that could be a clue that they were related. Okay. So that would be good. Oops. Wrong tab. I'm going to close this one. We are going back and forth between this one and the other. Okay. Boundary changes. Okay. That might be helpful. It was created from Sh uh, Franklin and Shelby counties. The county okay. seat is Warsaw. Yeah, I kind of want to know if there were boundary changes later. And my favorite source for that is Map of US. I think it's .org. Yeah, this so one. You're wondering if anybody, if they lost any land too. So we're starting like, okay. Clement was born around 1810. So let's see what it looked like that time. Gallatin's right here at the top. And there's Henry. And let's see, where's Carroll County? Is it anywhere around? Let's see, I'm looking for, yeah, I'm looking for that Carol key too. Is, Must be down the next column on the Oh, left. there it is. C-R-L is Carroll. Okay. And so I need to find Carroll on the map. Just curious if it's nearby. Yeah, Maybe it hasn't it. been created Maybe yet. Maybe it hasn't created. Okay. Let's go forward to 1860 and see. If, oh yeah, there it is. See, Carroll County is right next to Gallatin. So by 1860, it was created. So let's go forward in time. So 18, 10, 20. It wasn't there in 1820. It wasn't there in 1827. Okay, when was it made? 1840, it was there. Okay, it was created in 1838. So in 1838, Carroll County was created from Gallatin, Henry, and Trimble. So we've got to take mm -hmm. note of that. Okay. Back in our research log. from Gallatin County and others. So, you're, so your, your thought here is that if they had records that were 
in Gallatin, but then Carroll was formed out of it and they lived in that part of the county, then their records could have gone to the other county courthouse. Probably they would be in Gallatin. Okay. Because when Carroll was created, they would have started from scratch with brand new record books and they wouldn't have brought anything with them. So if you, like if we had done what we had thought about doing with Carroll County and started with Carroll and looked for a marriage record there or looked for his parents, we would have been stumped, right? Because they might've not been in, because Carroll County wasn't created till later. Cool. So okay. um, it's good to know if we're looking in neighboring counties, county that was the parent of the other county, it's just kind of good to get a bearing. This is like the main thing that I'd like to do in the locality step is just get so a wiki and the county boundaries. Yeah. Yeah. And no record loss. No record loss. Yeah. So if we're searching for a marriage and we know that, and then we find out later the marriage records are lost, we wasted our time. Yeah. Okay. I think that's enough for now. Let's see. Lands, all those things started in 1799. Death records and birth records started in 1852 and census started in 1810. So we could potentially find a, an 1810 census record that has Clement as a tick mark in the zero to five male column when was because he maybe was born in 1808 or 1810 some somewhere around there Mm -hmm. so yeah okay let's put this here so 1810 census death and birth 1852 so if there was a death record started in 1852 maybe we could find a death certificate for clement because he died in 1872 but how soon was compliance statewide registration Okay, so it says an asterisk there, which usually means only some places within Kentucky were doing, well, maybe this is county specific. So statewide registration for birth oh, and death wasn't until yeah. 1911, but we could look within the county for those. So maybe there is something, maybe there's a registry of, birth, of births and deaths. Great, now what else? Do we have any other thoughts we wanna do for locality? Yeah, now we specific can write our, to the locality? Yeah, maybe not. Yeah. yeah. Let's do this hypothesis then. So in our research planning step, which is the next step, we're going to do make a hypothesis for what we think happened, make a list of sources to check, and then prioritize them in order cool. of what we want to do. Okay. And so the working hypothesis, like, tell me what you think happened now that we've analyzed the background information. Like, yeah. So I guess we probably think that the parents of this this couple were living in Gallatin County, Kentucky uh, at the time that the couple was married. At the so, time that Clement and Drusilla yeah. were married. And that was 1832. Uh-huh. Right. Great. So and if we then, could search for yeah. them there on what? Oh, and then I guess at some point they moved to this other county of Kentucky, um, Carroll County, but we don't do you, know when. Do we think they moved or do we think they just stayed there and the new county was created? Right oh, right, right, them? right. That's right. <laughs> we don't know. Right. They could have moved yeah. within that Gallatin County. Who knows? It could be yeah. both. No, that's true. Let's see. When was Carroll created though? 38. So we could search in Gallatin and Carroll after 1838. And then I would probably add that Clement was born, to, you know, it said he was born in Virginia in to All right. yeah. parents, Virginia in 1808 to 1810 to parents who lived somewhere in Virginia. I'm going to guess Fauquier because that's what I, you know, that's kind of what the migration path has been for other people in this proof mm. argument. Okay. Yeah. But I didn't add that to my summary of known facts. So it's kind of cheating. <laughs> <laughs> Clement was born in Virginia in 18 to parents who lived in Fauquier, Virginia. Cause this is just our guess. This is our hypothesis. Yeah. And then the parents were living in Gallatin at the time that Clement and Drusilla were married in 1832. Great. This is a good hypothesis. Let's do so this. What, what was your research like before you used a hypothesis, before you made, took this step? What, you know, what did you gain by making this part of your research? This kind of forces me to think about what records I can find, because usually you don't search for records until you have a name, right? You're like, oh, mm-hmm. well, I have this name, Fanny Nolan. So now I'm going to go search for a name. But what if you don't have that name? to check for Clement's mom, you have to think about how old she would have been and where she would have lived. So we could even add that. So we could say Fanny Noland was probably the mother. She probably was 
born. Okay. Now we have to guess here. So if he was born in 1810, Clement, how old was the minimum age that Fanny could have been? Like, so if she were, I mean, 16. Let's say 16. Then, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So like 1794 would be Four. perfect. the latest. Yeah. Yeah. So we could say she was probably born back to 26 or before 36 or 1794. Right? Yeah. Before 1794. So now we have a guess. Even if we didn't have a guess, we could say, like, let's say we had the 1880 census and we knew that Clement said his mom was born in Virginia. Then we could say, we're looking for a person who was born in Virginia in 1794 or earlier. And then we yeah. can start searching, you know, within 1850 in Carroll County or Gallatin County for a woman of that description and see what we find for different candidates. So that hypothesis cool. okay. steps, yeah. the hypothesis step helps you build a profile of an unknown person and search for people that fit it. Cool. Okay. I like that. Now that we have this working hypothesis, I'm excited because we can make a list of our identified sources. So let's wrap it up for today. And when we record again, we'll come and we'll make a like big, long bulleted list of all the different censuses and different records like land tax and everything that we want to search next time. And we'll kind of put that information in from like the family search catalog with links to what we can search. And a lot of the time we'll do that in the locality step, but we can just do it in this step today. <laughs> okay, perfect. Yeah, no, that sounds really good. This has been really helpful and uh, that'll be a great place to pick it up next time. Fantastic. Thanks. Okay.